Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our guest is Anne Glauber. Now, Anne was diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer, a veritable death sentence for many people. However, Anne went on to discover some uh, some information on treatments that are kind of outside of the standard of care. And she's with us today to talk about her story, her diagnosis, and her Let's Win initiative, a first-of-its-kind crowdsourcing platform that's launched earlier this year that enables doctors, researchers, and patients to, to share some fast-breaking clinical information on potentially life-saving pancreatic cancer treatments. Welcome to the program, Anne. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you. Pancreatic cancer, um, it's one of the more deadly, for lack of a better term, one of the more aggressively deadly uh, cancers. Am I right in that assumption? I mean, you're a, you're a survivor. Talk about your, uh, your background, maybe your diagnosis, and how many people there are that are affected by this disease yearly. Yes, you're absolutely right by saying that pancreatic cancer is one of the most deadly cancers. It's mm-hmm. cancer in the country that has the highest mortality rate. Um, actually, when when people are diagnosed and begin to go on the internet and search for um, statistics about the disease, I mean, those people, I was horrified and um, shocked and devastated. I just, and I had to stop looking. I I, I couldn't believe what the statistics are. Um, Fifty thousand people are diagnosed with cancer every year, and. Um, Ninety-four percent of them will die of this cancer um, in less than five years. Uh, there is no cure for pancreatic cancer and no early detection. It's um, an extremely, extremely difficult disease, and I don't think that um, the general public knows how um, how difficult and devastating it is. Uh, for me, I I I was. Um, Living a very full life, um, I was, you know, working as a my my um, profession is public relations, and I was working um, at a major PR firm and feeling fine, and everything was great. And um, I, I I went to see a dermatologist who put a mirror to my eyes and saw that they were yellow, and I had jaundice. And then I had a sonogram, and then I had a CAT scan, and then I got the terrifying um, diagnosis of stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Mm-hmm. It was a complete shock because I had no symptoms. Had you had any uh, experience with cancer in general or pancreatic cancer in the past, maybe through a friend or a relative or, or a coworker? No, not at all. It was not in my family at all. And... Um, and I personally knew no one who had pancreatic cancer. Mm-hmm. So um, when I got this diagnosis, um, it, was, it was actually a surgeon who gave me this diagnosis after reading my CAT scan. And um, he basically said to me that I had about a year to live, maybe less. Um, there were two treatments available to me. Um, one treatment had bad side effects and the second treatment had even worse side effects. And when I asked that when I asked the doctor, well how long would the second treatment keep me alive? And he said, about two months. And um I heard this news and really did not know where to turn or what to do. And, you know, it took a while for my family and I to figure out what would be our plan of action because here I was determined not to do what that doctor suggested. So you get this diagnosis and you're obviously terrified and you're searching for this information. All you're finding is the negative. So you've got this negative, you know, going on, but you've uh, kind of changed your thinking about uh, this disease through this survival journey. Is that correct? That is, you're, you're absolutely correct. And um, I, as I said, I was determined to... Um, not not follow this this doctor's recommendation, mm-hmm. and to figure out a, another path for my treatment. And my um, my family and I just ended up doing a lot of research, talking to a lot of doctors um, in many different institutions on our search to find pancreatic cancer specialists. And I think that's really important. Um, when people get 
this diagnosis and, you know, again, you're shocked, you don't know what to do, you know, you may go to, to, to one doctor, your local oncologist, but I think it's extremely important to find out who the specialists are and to make appointments to go see some specialists and get second opinions always. So um, my family and I found um, a, a leading pancreatic cancer specialist, and we went to see him. So um, this treatment that he offered you, was it something that um, was extremely out of the mainstream or something simply, you know, you have to do a little bit of research in order to find people like him? Yes, he was. I, I wouldn't say he's extremely out of the mainstream mm-hmm. because um um, he uses, and his name is Dr. William Isakoff. He uses um, drugs that um, are all FDA approved, um, but he mixes them up in a different kind of way. Mm-hmm. And um, he provides a dosing called metronomic dosing, which is um, um, smaller doses over longer periods of time, so you don't feel the ravaging effect of um, the treatment. So I went to see him. I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I went to see him. He's in California and began my treatment with him. And then he recommended an outstanding doctor, pancreatic cancer specialist here in New York, Dr. Allison Ocean. And she has continued the treatment and modified the treatment. But I'm, I'm still on that metronomic dosing, which is, works for me. When we're talking about such a devastating uh, form of cancer and it moves so rapidly and with being no cure and really the treatments being bad or worse, with the exception of what you found uh, in your doctor in California, less than half of the 50 plus thousand people that are diagnosed uh, every year can even uh, even hope to uh, take advantage of. Yes, exactly right. Um, And um, that's um, that's one of the reasons why. we started Let's Win. Um, um, I started it with uh, Dr. Allison Ocean, who's my doctor. We're, we're, we're co-founders of Let's Win, which is a platform that provides treatment information to patients and families and information about new science um, that could potentially be used now by patients and families and really good, clear information about clinical trials. And um, we work closely with the Luskarton Foundation, which is the largest private funder of pancreatic cancer research in the country, and um, we are an initiative supported by them. So their involvement as well brings in the top scientists across the country to participate in Let's Win and provide information to patients and their families. Now, where can our listeners go and get more information about Let's Win crowdsourcing? It's, they can go to um, www.letswinpc.org. Thank you so much for joining us today, Anne. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, with Anne Glober. Anne is a pancreatic cancer survivor who went kind of outside the box to save her life, and she's been with us today talking about her Let's Win initiative as well as giving us an insight into her story, her diagnosis, and her change of mind and heart when it comes to pancreatic cancer. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.